Hey, welcome back. So it's been a while. Um, I've kind of lost track of what we're doing, but I do know that our goal now is in the last episode, I showed you how to instantiate a cube um, over photon fusion. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually bring in some Ready Player Me avatars and continue with our Ready Player Me tutorial series. Um, just for a heads up, what do we have right now? Um, I have a player, and you saw this in some of my previous tutorials. This is just our third person player. Our camera is already looking at the player. So here's our main camera. And you know what? Let's bring this down near the camera. Here's our Cinemachine virtual camera, and it's following the player and it's looking at the player. So our settings are all set up. So it's following this invisible player. In fact, if I hit play, I can start moving, and you can see the camera is following the invisible player. And in just a minute, you're actually going to see the Ready Player Me avatar spawn in. All right, but we're going to do the Ready Player Me avatar from scratch here. All right, so what we need is we need an empty game object to be our network player prefab, and we need an interpolation target. Okay, we covered this when we did the cube in the last episode. And the reason we need to have this interpolation target, which is just another empty game object that I have, is just a child of the main player here. And keep in mind, this isn't going to have the controller or anything on it. All right, this player has all of our player movement and input stuff on it. Um, all we're using this network player prefab for is for the avatar that we're loading in, our animator, and everything's going to be on it. So the first thing we need for any spawnable object is we need the network object component on it. So you just go down to add component and just type in network object, and there it is. All right. And um, you want to make sure it is spawnable, and we want to make sure it destroys when state authority leaves, and we don't want to allow state authority override. Not for this, because this is a, an avatar. All right, collapse that. We want to add a network transform. We did this with the cube too. And I always keep it for auto. I put interpolation space on world. And then um, the interpolation target, drag the interpolation target in there. And I just keep everything as defaults. And something that you always want for your players is you're going to want a script that's your network player settings. So let's go in and take a look at what this network player settings is. Um, I don't think I've covered this in any of my previous tutorials. Um, with Photon Pun 2, um, whether you're using Playmaker or you're writing in C Sharp, there are uh, player properties that you would set that kind of get managed by um, Photon itself, sort of. Um, but here what we have is we have a script that is our network player settings, and it's a network behavior, not a mono behavior. It works very much like a mono behavior, a lot of the same stuff you could write in here. Um, but this is where you're going to have all your network sync variables. And with Fusion, you, um, you're going to do not a lot of RPCs. So in the past, when I worked with Pun2, I did a lot of RPCs to like send, um, like, what is my avatar URL? Um, what is my name? And I would do that with RPCs, mostly because network syncing the variables with Pun2 and Playmaker, which is what I used to, start, used to use all the time, it wasn't very straightforward and didn't seem to work very well. Um, but with Fusion, and now that I'm doing everything with C Sharp, um, Network syncing variables works really well, and I have to use very little RPCs. And Fusion does not have buffered RPC as an option, so you want to avoid RPCs anyway for anything that you want players joining later to know. So, anytime you're dealing with a string that you want to be network synced, you're not going to use the string variable, you're going to use a network string. And so when you type network string, um, you have to then, in these little, I don't know the official name, but these little arrow brackets, you need to put in how long the string could be. What's the maximum length? And you'd be surprised. Like, I thought I could get away with some stuff for being it really short. Um, but for avatar URL, for sure, you need at least 128 um, characters for that. And so, um, let me break down this bit here. So, what is all this? So, if I wanted to had a variable that I just wanted to be synced, it's as simple as just typing this, networked, and then um, typing in like my public variable or whatever I wanted here. All right, let's go take a look at their website and I can show you um, the different variable types supported. So one of the best resources on photonengine.com with the Fusion documentation is just search network behavior um, because this will tell you um, like the different allowed properties and stuff you can use. So let's scroll down just a little bit. All right, and so here is the allowed types. So um, as you can see, you just if you want something networked, you just put the networked before the variable and it accepts primitives such as bytes, shorts, ints, longs, u shorts, u ints, u longs, floats, doubles, and bools. Um, but the bool gets converted to an int. Um, strings, you have to give it 
set the length or the maximum capacity, which you saw me do in my example. Um, you can use vector twos, vector threes, vector fours, um, all these options here. And then take a look at these fusion defined network structs. So we're using network string. Notice it says up here, you can also do strings with maximum length set. Um, but I don't know the benefit of that. And whenever I've tried using strings, it hasn't really worked and I get a, uh, uh, an L weaver error. So I just always use network strings. Um, I use network bools whenever I need to use bools. And um, I haven't really used any of the other network ver uh, things except, oh, there's uh, network collections. Um, we're not going to use that in this uh, demo, but that allows you to network sync arrays and lists and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. All right, so those are the types. So let's come back over here. Oh, and let's go to our script. So um, let's delete that. So one thing you can do too is if you want a method to be called if this variable changes, then you just put in this here, on changed equals named of, and this is the method that gets called, avatar URL changed. All right, this needs to be a static um, void. I don't know if it has to be a void, but this is just what I've always used, public static void, um, avatar URL changed is the name of it. And then you also need this little callback thingy. So <laughs> changed, I know, I know all the technical terms changed network player settings that's going to be the name of your class and then change so this is how you can um access that change so um if i then want to do something from that change we go change behavior and if i just wanted to get that variable i would then just type dot avatar url um but what i actually want to do is i want to access the avatar loader and then load the avatar of that URL that got changed. So that's what I'm doing here. If you can see, I have this serialized field of my ready player me avatar loader, avatar loader. And so on that avatar loader um, class or on the ready player me avatar loader, I'm going to call the method load avatar. So I can just click on control click and it'll take me over there. I'm going to do the load avatar. I'm going to pop in the URL here. And to get that URL that was changed, you have to then type change dot behavior, which is this behavior, and then get the variable, which is the avatar URL, change it to a string because it's currently a network string, and then um, it'll be good to go. And it'll run the uh, load avatar method off of my ready player me script that we'll take a look here in a minute, which really isn't going to be that much different. Um, another thing that you might need on your player settings is you might want to actually have the name of the player. So I, I have another uh, networked, no, not there, I have another networked um, string. And this one's only going to be 16 characters long, so I'm, I'm limiting it. And uh, this will be whatever the player's name is. I'm not going to cover this in um, this tutorial. And you can even see I have the method set up here, but I'm not doing anything with it. All right, so um, I'm not really going to cover... Um, how we're going to get the ready player me uh, avatar url because we've done that in much earlier episodes of this tutorial series but just to review um when we get that url when the url changes we can it's going to go through the avatar loading process and then once it gets the avatar load complete callback i am then going to set the avatars transform parent um as the player so how is my ready player me avatar loader script gonna know about this player object now i could just search for it i can make it even easier by just putting on a tag this is my player um and i could do that one thing i've been doing a lot recently is i've been using scriptable objects for managing variables that i'm gonna need all over the place and i think i've covered this in a previous um tutorial series but i can't remember just to review, a scriptable object is a very simple um, class you can create. Um, it derives from scriptable object. You just name the type of scriptable object and you put in all the variables that you want to be on the scriptable object. So some stuff that I'm putting on the scriptable object is the network runner, the network player settings, the ready player me avatar loader, my player parent, and then my player movement script. So what can I do once I have this? So once I have this, um, one's not... This is what the scriptable object looks like, but it's not created automatically. Um, so if you noticed in the script itself, um, there's this create asset menu line here. And so what that lets me do is I can right click, go to create, go to scriptable objects, uh, and then what did I call it? 
probably googly eyes games yeah let's do it uh googly eyes games slash game component manager so now if i come over here and i go to create i can go to my scriptable objects googly eyes games there's my game component manager I already have one. So what can I do with this? So if I go to my prefabs and I go to my network player prefab, on my network player prefab, like on my ready player me avatar loader, I have this my game component manager um scriptable object already here. And so what I'm doing in my ready player me avatar loader script is um I'm not doing it. Oh yeah, um, so right here I have it. So what it's doing is it's checking my scriptable object for um, my avatar variable on my player movement script and it's setting my avatar transform to that variable. And the reason I'm doing that on my player movement script, and I was control clicking on each of those to get here, is because it's telling my uh, my avatar on update to actually look in the direction of movement, which we covered in a previous episode. My network player settings should, but they might not be. Yeah, it's not. But another useful thing I could do is um, if we look at my game components manager, we have a variable for my network player settings. So what we should do is um, on awake, which we don't have an awake here doesn't look like so let's do that so we can do a private void awake right and then we can go to our uh well first we need to actually put in this could probably be public but why not make it private we're gonna serialize a private and this is i'm called it game component manager and game component manager that was not it game component manager all right save that all right, so now in my inspector, I have the game component manager, and I can just drop it there. Because I might potentially need to be able to access these network player settings. And there's other ways to do this, too. Um, some of you who are a little bit more skilled, I'm like, well, Philip, why don't you make it like a public static class that can just be accessed from everywhere? And I probably would, but I'm honestly not super comfortable with doing things like that, especially since I come from a visual scripting background with Playmaker. I love to just be able to see the thing that I'm accessing. And at any time during runtime, I can just come in here and double click on this and I can make sure that my variables are accessed. Now, while running, it'll often say type mismatch and that's just part of it being a scriptable object, I guess. But if you click on the type mismatch, it'll actually highlight it in the hierarchy window if it's part of the scene. I'm gonna go ahead and save that prefab. So um, even though it shows that it, it's, if it's a mismatch, it's still got it. You can click it and it'll show it to you. If it's missing, well, then it doesn't have it. All right, so let's go back here. And what we wanted to do is on our network player settings is on awake, um, we have to be really careful here for a few different things because we might be tempted to just say um, tell our game component manager that the network what did i call it players settings that the player settings script is this but keep in mind every player that joins our room is going to have this network player settings script on it so we need to go if our runner, which you can access the runner if you're using Fusion, which we are, we should be able to just say runner dot is local runner dot local player. Yeah, if we do if runner dot local player, then do this. But um, off sometimes what I've also done is I'll save my runner, which I really don't need to. Um, this should just work. I've, I've, I'll save my runner in my game component manager too. You see how I have it here. And then what I can do is I would type in like game component manager dot runner dot local player. But um, Fusion is set up that we should just be able to do runner dot local player. Um, it's giving me the same little error that, hey, this is use player ref is valid. This is going to be obsolete. But I ran it by the folks at Photon and they said, you can still use local player for this. It'll still be available. So this is the best way to find out if this player is the local player. All right, so if we are the local player, then we can tell the game component manager that the player settings is this. All right, so let's just see what that does real quick. 
So before hitting play, we can see that our player settings is missing. Um, we haven't set that yet. But if we hit play, all right, so now it's loaded. Now you can see player settings type mismatch. But if I click on it, it's found it right here on this, this object, okay? So that's why that's pretty useful. So the next thing we wanna do is we actually want to make sure that we have our um, network player prefab completely set up to load this avatar. So um, the avatar, as you saw, is already loading in because I was messing with it previous. And we've talked about and we've done loading the avatar before. Nothing's really different here, except that we are, um, and I said in this script, I said here we were setting the player as its parent, but we're not. We're actually doing that in the, we're doing it on this one? Nope, we're, maybe we are doing it here. Oh, duh, we're doing it in our Fusion Connection script. <laughs> All right, um, I hadn't come back this far yet. Um, but we did this with the cube as well, right? So when it's spawned, we're telling it what its player should, who its parent should be right here. No, that's the, don't we do it here. All right, so when it spawns the avatar, see network object avatar equals all this. Once that's spawned, we're saying, hey, the avatar's parent is gonna be our player parent, which we store as a variable. So we have private transform player parent. Come out of here, player, uh, no, fusion manager. We're telling it what our player parent is. And if you've missed some of the episodes or forgot, why is it that our, you might be asking, Philip, why is it that all of our controls are in the scene and not actually part of our player that gets instantiated? And the reason we do this is it, it's a lot less that's going, we're gonna have to take care of when we actually instantiate the player. Because when our network player is instantiated, for the other players, we don't want all this extra garbage because it's just gonna create confusion. We're gonna put a lot of, hey, if this is the local player, then run these script scenarios. So what's nice is none of this is going to be control, is gonna be coming over the network to other players. We're only going to see what's on this network player prefab. All right, um, so hopefully I haven't lost you all. I'm sorry it's been three weeks or something like that since I've looked at this project, but um, hopefully you all are picking this up. If not, please put comments, questions and comments, and just let me know you're watching in the comments because that motivates me to put these out even faster. If I don't hear anybody chatting about it for several weeks, I don't think about it, and so I don't make these videos. All right, so there is going to be some other stuff that we want on our avatar, though. And we've set this up in previous um, episodes of this series. So we already have, right, like our Ready Player Me animator. In this animator, we already have our blend tree, we have our idle state, we have our walking state, we have our fast run state. So once we instantiate our avatar, we're going to need to um, add an animator to it, right? So how we do that? Well, we do it at runtime. Some things you wanna keep in mind though about adding things at runtime is some fusion components you can't add at runtime. So you want them already built into a prefab. Like you can spawn a prefab at runtime with the components on it, but most fusion components you can't add at runtime. So keep that in mind. So if we go to our Ready Player Me avatar loader script, once this avatar load is complete, um, notice we have the if we have state authority of this avatar role of this network object the avatar is on meaning if this is ours we need to do more stuff let's keep in mind this the avatar is getting loaded for all the players in the network all the players in the network is running this logic here um, it's even running this logic um, so when it gets to this method we don't want all the players doing this bit so just to review if this is ours we're getting our avatar we're getting um I don't know what I'm doing here in line 30. I don't even know if that's important. So we're getting the parent of the avatar. Um, I think the reason I did this was I was going to set its position and rotation to match its parent, but then I realized I don't need to. So I'm just gonna delete that. Because the reason I don't need to is we can just set the local position and rotation. So when the avatar gets spawned in, it's probably gonna do this automatically anyways, but just to be safe, I always set the uh, 
local position. And I just recently learned you don't have to do this. You can do uh, for our local position, we can do vector um, vector 3.0. And then our local rotation, we can do vector 3.0 as well. That way you're not creating a new vector three. It's just that creates a few bytes of garbage that you don't want to have to deal with. And uh, then we tell the game components manager that our avatar transform is this avatar. But our avatar needs an animator. So we need to add a serialized field. And we're going to add a private animator. Should call it animator and then we're gonna go down here and say our animator equals um add component uh, i guess we do game object first game object dot add component or game object <laughs> there we go dot add component animator okay and so we have an animator added and um This is the animator component, but we also need a, we actually don't even need to serialize that. Um, what we need to serialize is our animator controller. Um, am I losing my mind here? What's going on? Why do I not see the animator controller? All right, bear with me a minute. Let me save this and let's go look at what's in the inspector. Nothing, because I didn't serialize it. So let's put that back. Serialize field, save. So there's the animator. Am I losing my mind? Is that what? The... We drop this in here. No, we can't do that. Yeah. What is this considered then? Is this a runtime animator controller? Am I losing my mind? So. We're gonna have a private animator that's gonna get added at runtime, but then we're gonna have a serialized field. We need to tell it what animator controller. I wonder if it is runtime animator, animator controller. I am losing my mind. I, I did not think it was runtime animator controller. I swear I've done this before. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna call this controller then. And let's see if that's what we think it is. All right, moment of truth. Oh, it is. All right. Okay. So I'm partially losing my mind, but there we go. We want runtime animator controller, controller. And then we're going to, on the animator, tell it that it's runtime animator controller is our controller. Name it however you like, but that's how I'm naming it. So let's test this again. We're going to leave the prefab, tell it to save. Of course, you can tell it in the scene manager when you have the prefab open, you can tell it to autosave, but I don't. I don't know why I started turning that off. I just like to know that changes were made. But sometimes I'll go into a prefab and I don't want the changes made, so I don't autosave anymore. All right, so you can see it kind of did something, but not what we expected. <laughs> so something changed. So here's our player that was already in the scene. We added our network avatar. So I think when I remove that transform, it's no longer putting the this avatar should be loaded as a child of this network player prefab um, but if we look at our avatar we do see we have an animator now and we don't have a controller on it so lots of stuff went wrong this time oh i'm an idiot i just realized that line that i deleted so we have our avatar dot transform dot parent we're setting the parent of the avatar <laughs> Transform is just the transform that this script is on, which is our network player prefab. And so me deleting that line <laughs> made it to where the avatar was never set on the thing. Um, so sorry about that. And then one other thing we can also do here just to make things cleaner in our hierarchy is let's just say our avatar.name. This is just going to be the name that it's in the hierarchy. I guess we need to do avatar.gameobject.name. I don't know why it's so upset, but we'll just. Really, avatar is already a game object. So we should be able to do avatar.name equals, 
and we're just going to say avatar. That way, it'll show up in the hierarchy as we expect. I don't understand why it created the animator, but we were unable to set the controller. I'm going to hit play again and see what happens. Ah, well, see, that's what happened is we we have the animator, we have the controller, um, but it set it on our network player prefab and not on our avatar. So did you all catch that and I missed that? So let's go look at the script. Um, so we have, yeah, because we added an animator to not our avatar, but to the game object the script is on, which is our network prefab. If you noticed, um, our network player prefab, if we go look at it, it doesn't have an animator on it. So we don't even need to worry about that. We can just go, we can just go, uh, bazoink, can we do that? Bazoink, delete all that. We still need our runtime one. Maybe we don't need an animator. And what if we just, do um oh no we still need to add an animator but what we could do no we need to save it we got to save it undo 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 um yeah we're gonna keep that up there so we are going to avatar no animator equals we got to start with our avatar game object and then add the component to that all right, sorry for that little mess up. And then on our animator, we want to uh, set the runtime animator controller to be our controller. Wonderful. So now if we go hit play, that should be set up correct. All right, so we're playing now. There's our player. There's our network player prefab. Now we have our avatar. On our avatar is the animator, but not the controller. How did I mess that up this time? It worked whenever we set it on the uh, network player prefab. It was there. Ah, when in doubt, look at your console. Object reference not set to an instance of an object. So on line 98. What? 98? Oh, on the avatar loader. Oh, line 40. Ready player me, avatar loader, line 40. It's telling us that... Either the animator doesn't exist, or the runtime animator controller doesn't exist, or our controller doesn't exist. Well, we know our animator exists because we added it and we could see it. Um, and we know our runtime animator controller exists. It does, doesn't it? Because it's there. So my only thought is that we are trying to set it too fast, which seems ridiculous to me but we can try doing it in a co-routine. Um, unless y'all are screaming at me that I forgot something, but I mean, it's, it's all here. Um, I was able to create the animator, but it was not able to add the um, runtime controller. So um, let's, I guess, create a co-routine for that. So let's do um, start coroutine, add animator stuff. That, and then down here, private IE numerator, numerator, add animator stuff. There we go. And I don't know why I'm going up there. Let's just stay down here and alt enter using system collections all right add animator stuff all right so here we're going to um add this animator cut paste and then we're going to yield return new wait until and then you got to put close open and close parentheses and you got to put a little lambda expression and we're gonna wait until, uh, well shoot, we also need to know who the avatar is. So we're gonna put in a game object, 
avatar and then in here type avatar all right now we're good. all right and so we were gonna wait until um what are we waiting until we're waiting until uh avatar dot get com component animator right why am i doing it like that animator all right so we're waiting until it finds the animator and then once it's found the animator we're saying animator dot runtime animator controller is our controller so let's delete this line get all those extra lines we'll save and i still feel like i'm losing my mind now i'm gonna go look at our prefab one more time yeah we have our controller all right so let's hit play and see what happens oh we got another null object exception thing 49 I am so confused right now. All right, so when things don't make sense, and maybe you've already caught it, we're gonna do some debug logs. All right, I've added these two debug logs. Let's see if it gives us any useful information. All right, well, those debug logs were worthless because once it had that null reference, it stopped running the rest of the code. But we can see we can't add animator to the avatar because the component is already there. Oh, that's the problem because that's the problem because watch this. Oh, let me stop that. There's already an animator, I think, when the avatar gets created by Ready Player Me. So if we just forget we did all that, let's get these rid of these blanks here. Because we don't add an animator to it up here. So let's just run it without us adding anything to it. Get another issue here on the network player settings 22. Something's null. Network player settings, 22, doesn't, this logic it's not happy about. Because it can't find the runner. So maybe we need to do what I was doing. But let's take a look and see if this guy did his thing. So if we look at the avatar, yeah, so it already came with an animator. So that was our issue. So we're going to go ahead and fix this and that. So we're going to do what I talked about doing before. And again, I must have just been losing my mind again. Um, so we're going to say uh, game component manager dot runner dot local player. Okay, if that, and it should be happy with that. And then on already player me avatar loader, we're just going to uh, game object. No, we're going to do avatar dot get component, the animator. And let's go ahead and save this as a variable because we're probably going to need to. Animator equals that because um, we're probably going to set it in the network player settings to make sure we're sending the animator pro uh, parameters to it, uh, properties to it. Um, so we're getting that, but then while we're getting it, we're also, oh no, I got to do it like that first because we're saving the animator first. And then we're going to say, uh, we're going to get the animator and then we're going to tell it that it's runtime animator controller equals our controller. All right, pretty confident that's going to work. Sorry for the workaround or the runaround here. All right, beautiful. We don't have any errors now. I mean, we got some debugs there. Um, as you can see now, my uh, avatar is at least in an idle state. Um, but uh, now we just need to make sure that whenever I am moving, we do our moving animations. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. In the next part, we'll actually show you how we take care of the animations, and we're gonna have to add some network mechanism components to our player prefab so that our animations get synced over the network. But um, YouTube thinks this video is right for you, so check it out. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you next time.